and welcome. We're going to cover in chapter 8 the use of payroll in QuickBooks. So after studying this chapter, we're going to be able to manage the employee list. We're going to be able to implement information from an outside payroll service into our QuickBooks, like an outside payroll service like ADP. We're going to set up QuickBooks to run payroll. And then we're going to show you how to create uh, the paychecks, right? If you're going to run paychecks out of uh, your out of the QuickBooks locally and not have a payroll company do that, we're also going to track and pay payroll liabilities, including taxes and uh, insurance payments. And then we're going to also fix payroll errors. We're going to say when is it uh, correct to. Uh, delete something versus uh, reverse it and those kind of things. Uh, we're also going to process payroll forms and reports. So first, working with employees in QuickBooks. So one of the things that we have to ask ourselves is when must you enter a new employee's payroll tax information, right? So, um, and, and really who is an employee? That's, that's one thing, right? So one thing to stress here is that an employee is somebody you're going to issue a W-2 form to. So a W-2 form is going to be a form that they're going to take and they're going to use to file their taxes at the end of the year. Uh, there, the other option is if they are a, a contractor, a subcontractor, then they are, you're going to issue them not a W-2 form, but you're going to issue them a 1099, right? And so the difference between those two are important to distinguish. Uh, first, an employee typically works using your equipment. They work under your direction, right? And um, they are typically they use um, your equipment. And there's several other things that the IRS states uh, delineates a subcontractor, right, from an employee. When in doubt, treat them like an employee. That's the safest way to go. Um, so, so anyways, so we've, we've got our employee list. We're going to be able to pull, pull up in QuickBooks and, and work with. Um, so what kind of information do we put in for an employee? Well, we're going to have to put their name in, their address, and social security number. That's key information so you can work with the government and their taxes and report taxes on them. You also need to include wages. Uh, additions and deductions, right? So additions and deductions are things that are beyond the wage, um, additional income, and also deductions from their paycheck for things like um, uh, insurance, for things like um, child um, support, right? Those kind of things are deductions that come out of their paycheck. So we're, we're going to also um, be setting for employees uh, defaults, right? Depending on the class of employee, and so we're going to want to we're, we're going to want to put into QuickBooks what type of employee they are, so that they have all those defaults set up to help us with QuickBooks. All right, so working with outside an outside payroll service. So the idea with an outside payroll service like ADP, ADP is the biggest um, one, but there are others is to get uh, some help with the workflow, right? So you're, you're setting all this information up for your employees, all of their settings, and then you have to track hours, right? And you have to track deductions and you have to make payments on those uh, liabilities you create from deducting taxes and, and other things from their paycheck. And so you can have an outside employee, um, an outside, Payroll service do pretty much all of that for you, but the way we the, the way we have to track it right to be able to get and make our financial statements correct and have that information is we have to enter a lot of information into QuickBooks already. So information to track we're gonna we're gonna already have all of our inf employee information in QuickBooks. So we have to have it in there. And so really what an outside payroll service is gonna do is they're gonna do a lot of the legwork for us. But we also, but we have to keep the data on our side as well, so we can transfer information back and forth. Um, and so we have to give them data, so we have to have the data to do that. And then as they give us data back, as they're reporting what they've done, we've got to have the data there for it to match up with and to fall in line under employees, the actual pays, uh, payments, and those type of things. 
So we're going to need to do it all, set all the employees up. We're going to set all the expenses and the liabilities up for for that. So expenses are things like things that the employer has to pay, right? Uh, that, that's generated. We have to actually pay the paycheck, right? So the hours they work, we owe them salaries or wages. Um, there's also the employer side of the taxes that are expenses for us. Uh, and and then, then the liabilities are, th are pass-through payments or payments that we incur through payroll that we then owe out to a third party like the U.S. government or an insurance company. Uh, those kind of things are going to be liabilities we're going to create as well. So, and we have to have all that information locally uh, because as we transfer data back and forth, it's going to be updated and, and um, dynamic, but we have to have it there first and we have to set it up in QuickBooks. So, we're also, uh, so, so there's also information from the outside payroll service in the QuickBooks. So, that information that's flowing is going to be uh, employee paychecks that the payroll service creates. Um, and also tax benefit payments that they generate through getting those paychecks out. They're gonna they're gonna report that back to us. Um, so as we have we have company preferences, right? And so what we're gonna do is we have to go into our preferences tab in in QuickBooks, and we have to go ahead and uh, get the payroll service um, active. So we have to have set up the payroll service and get it working. So that's important to do. Um, so. As we run payroll in QuickBooks, right? QuickBooks, and then this is not using an outside uh, service. This is running it in QuickBooks. So QuickBooks keeps a separate set of records for payroll to be able to produce required legal forms and, and reports. So that's something that, that happens is that is gonna be generated, done in QuickBooks so we can issue those things outward. Uh, we also have uh, our payroll liabilities and the paychecks that have to be done uh, really, those uh, the U.S. government and uh, insurance companies, anything connected to payroll, is a vendor that we get a reg checks to, right? So that's going to be what happens, and that comes out of payroll as well. Um, you, so we have to enter the payroll transactions properly. So super important when you're doing payroll. If you enter something incorrectly, then the downstream uh, legal forms and reports and paychecks and the li tax liabilities are gonna be incorrect and that's big trouble. So payroll has to be entered incorrectly. So um, so we have lots of options. So we have the options in payroll. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna check the, the website and look at kind of what's the pros and cons of running payroll in QuickBooks versus using a, a payroll processor and running it outside of um, QuickBooks. We can. If we want to, we can actually do, I, I know some, some people that have small businesses that do payroll calculations and everything out in the Excel quick uh, spreadsheet and cut actually physically write the paychecks for the correct amount um, and track all their liabilities in the spreadsheet and then enter all that information in on the backside in Qu to QuickBooks as well and not use payroll inside QuickBooks. So that's an option as well. If you don't have a lot of employees, that may be doable. And if you kind of know and understand the payroll process, that's doable. If you don't understand the payroll process, if you have more than uh, just a few employees, then using QuickBooks payroll is gonna be uh, useful. And if you don't wanna mess with it, then use an outside payroll processor. That's gonna be important and have a bookkeeper or you, right, set up some of those needed things in QuickBooks so that you can use the outside payroll processing system to update your information. So uh, common mistakes, uh, so things not to do. So one of the things is to make payroll liabilities adjustment without, uh, with a journal entry. So never do that. So the, this should all be done within the payroll process. Right, so don't go in and say, I'll fix it with a journal entry. Don't do that. So do everything within the payroll process in QuickBooks. Um, pay liabilities with a regular paycheck. That's not something that we do. Um, so even though the, those uh, vendors, right, are out there for us to pay liabilities to, don't run it through the regular system. It has to be done with a payroll um, liability through, through this payroll system and then set up payroll items incorrectly. So that's something that we'll make sure that we can do correctly as well. Um, so it flows through the system. So those, the setup is important. 
Um, so mistakes, and this is a note right here on the side just to make sure, mistakes cause the chart of accounts to be affected, but the separate payroll records are not, right? So something that's important is the impact that we have on our balances for our account balances and that are gonna be impacted. And if we set it up wrong, we may have incorrect um, accounts as well. So, so that's something that we need to take a look at. All right, so we're gonna be doing, um, so, th so this is an option, right? So one of the options is you get going with payroll. You may not start at the very beginning of the year, so you may want to put in some historical information. So you have to enter the payroll history um, with existing employees, so set them up, and then uh, who have a, at least um, received at least one paycheck. Okay, right? So that's the idea is, is they have to be those employees that have been going, they have to be paid to get historical information. Um, so you're going to want to have information on prior period paychecks and prior liability uh, payments, the whole deal. You can't just put in necessarily the paycheck amount, right? You have to have all of the, the entire package for payroll to be able to track it and do that. So, um, so payroll deductions, right? Something to know, right? So as you cut a paycheck, Right? There's going to be deductions that come out. So we're going to have the gross pay, which is their, basically the, the, either their hourly wage or their total salary, right, is the gross pay. Uh, the hourly wage times the number of hours they worked, right, is the gross pay for hourly workers, and then just the salary amount per month or per pay period for um, salary workers. And then uh, from that comes out deductions. So those deductions are gonna be in the form of taxes, compensation, uh, and benefits, right? Um, all sorts of different things connected to those things. And so they're gonna come out and then, then in the end, so there's gonna be subtracted out, that's what they're deducted, right? And then in the end, you're gonna have net payroll, which is the actual amount that you cut uh, the check for and pay, pay the employee for it. So, so one of the things that we wanna do is, um, uh, we're also going to be able to um, walk through a payroll setup interview, and that's that's something that's important to be able to understand all the information that you need to do, especially if you're doing historical things as you begin payroll. Um, uh, you you also need uh, one note on this slide as well is you need to have an employer identification number. Uh, you cannot pay taxes for an employee unless you have one of those, right? So that's something you can get from the IRS as you incorporate and uh, apply for um, an EIN number, it actually is what it's usually called. They usually drop the F off there, but it's an EIN or an employee, employer identification number is what it's called. Okay, so another thing that we need to do is, um, so the payroll item list, right? So we're gonna have a payroll item list, just like the other list that we've worked with in QuickBooks. And we're gonna, um, we're gonna set up main items, and then we can also set up sub items to make things more meaningful, right? If so if we have um, some main uh, taxes, federal taxes, we're gonna have the type of tax underneath that, right? As a sub item, possibly. And then we're going to use the list to verify correct payroll items set up. Uh, once we get our list set up, right, and that's going to help us then move forward. Uh, all payroll items, compensation, taxes, and other deductions are displayed on the payroll item list. So all of that, all of those main items uh, are going to be out there. So workers' compensation. So workers' comp is also, uh, we can run that through payroll as well. Um, so you've got to turn on the preference first. So go to preferences and you've got to be able to track the workers' compensation as you do that. So depending on the state, uh, that's going to be a different uh, vendor or a different setup, right, for the liability on that. But it's possible to set that up as well. 
Okay, so now, now for the payroll center, right? So as we enter the payroll center, um, we're gonna, um, uh, so we have to turn on the payroll first in preferences, right? And then we're gonna have the payroll tab and employee center uh, that are gonna be displayed as part of the employee center. So we're gonna be able to go there and we're gonna be able to work through this, right? So that's something that's it, that will appear or become available after you turn the preference on. Um, so uh, once we uh, enter all the paycheck information, right, and do the setup, so the setup includes in entering employees and their information and entering the lists, right, the payroll uh, items on the list, payroll item list, and then once we do that, then we're able to, um, we're able to enter the payroll information window and you can view the details and review and create paychecks, right? And on, in the review and create paychecks window. So that's something that you can set up as well on there. So, so the detailed paycheck information is displayed uh, in the review and create paychecks window. So that's important to know. So uh, payroll schedules, right? So this is gonna be in the new payroll schedule window, right? So we're gonna look in there and as we do that, we're gonna be able to set the timing for our payroll. So uh, this is gonna help us as we process it. So it'll help the computer, basically QuickBooks, to know how to split up the information that's given to it, right? So it pays taxes on time, it knows how often, um, and, and the split for monthly things as well. So it's gonna know that, because there's a timing for payroll. Payroll's a cycle, right? And so we're gonna be able to check if we're doing things uh, payroll weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, or if there's some other option. Typically, those are the those are the ones, right, that we're gonna be doing. We're gonna do it weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. Those are the most common. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna set it up and uh, set up when we pay it and what we're gonna call it, right? Uh, also, which day of the month? If we have a day of the month, then we're going to pick the day of the month that we're going to do it and that way we know the cycle and how it's going to go forward and when the next paycheck date is going to be. So this is something that as we um, go through payroll, these are dates that we're going to have to make sure are set so the system knows when the paycheck date is going to be and uh, the timing of the payroll. Um, some other considerations. So, so one of the things that we can do as well, right, if we have employees working for us and they're doing like a specific work for a specific customer or job, uh, we can go ahead and we can connect that time to that job, right? So then it becomes billable straight through. So for example, if we have uh, an employee working on a, uh, a project, we can go ahead and bill all of their hours for that project directly to the customer. Uh, and also another thing, this is a whole bundle, right? This is something else to get a, a handle on, but we can also have six, assign sick and vacation hours um, that are taken uh, th at every pay uh, period as well. So that way we can have those uh, calculated as well. Really those, you know, it doesn't seem like real money, right? Sick and vacation hours, but it is. Those are liabilities and those those are things that we need to track uh, to make sure our financials are correct as well. So so in, so in here the, uh, the available and is going to be what's available that's being tracked as we set that up and then accrued is gonna be what uh, we're gonna use, right? Or what's um, the movement then in those hours, okay? All right, so our tracking and billing. So what is, a couple of the things we can ask ourselves here is, uh, how can you determine how much is being held in the payroll liabilities accounts and sub-accounts? Right, so, so it's done with a report. So we can pull a report, payroll liability balances report, and that will tell us what the balances are in those accounts. So super important as we get those 
as we make payment and as we do adjustments to things and make sure we, we're paying the correct amount to taxes and to insurance companies and other things, um, those balances are going to be super important. One of the things you're going to do as well is you're going to basically be able to reconcile what we need to pay and what the balance says we need to pay, right? So our actual book balance that's in QuickBooks versus what the vendor says we need to pay and we need to reconcile those two things. So that's something that's like a bookkeeping activity that we need to do. That way we are always cutting the right amount, uh, the checks for the right amount for our liability checks and um, not overpaying and not underpaying, right? Because we can get in big trouble for that. And so that could lead to problems down the road. And so that's gonna be our payroll liabilities um, reports that we're gonna use on that. So um, we're also gonna uh, pull, be able to pull up the payroll um, liabilities window, right, as we do this. And, uh, and this is how we cut checks, right? So we're never gonna use the right checks window for payroll taxes. So that's not something we do. Uh, we're gonna do that through the payroll system, not through the uh, normal write checks for vendors, right? So that's important to note. So what about if we make a mistake? So get pretty much guaranteed you're gonna make mistakes in payroll. That's just the nature of payroll. There's so much stuff happening and uh, guaranteed you're gonna have some problems in payroll. So. Uh, so some errors can be corrected uh, with this window, right? This is the edit void paychecks window. So one of the important things noted here is the important messages at the top and bottom of the window, right? Make sure to follow the guidance provided in the window. So this window is going to tell you uh, and, and warn you about the impacts of what you're doing in this window. So that's... It, it, it may be correct, but you, just as long as you're aware of what you're doing, right? When you make any uh, edits or if you void anything, okay? So that's super important. Um, you can also limit the, the dates on here to focus in on the exact payroll or the, the paycheck and look things up that you need to um, look into, right? As you're trying to find errors and then fix them. So uh, fixing a paycheck. Right? So we're correcting a paycheck error for a prior uh, year, right? If it's, if it's a prior year, void the paycheck and reissue it, okay? Void the paycheck and reissue the, that, and that will do it for the prior year, okay? If it's, uh, so, so um, there, there's, there's also a feature that's called the LockNet Pay feature. Uh, and that's going to prevent you from changing the amount of a check, right? So, so that's going to be important. Uh, one reason why we we uh, void it and reissue it is because you can't edit it, right? So unscheduled, um, yeah. So that those are going to be some things that you're going to be doing. So making corrections to a, a payroll liability payment made with a regular paycheck. So what we're going to do is we're going to void the regular paycheck. Process the payment properly, okay? So, so those are going to be things. Uh, there's there are controls in place, so we can't just go in and willy nilly edit things throughout, right? So in, in many cases, it's okay to go ahead and void a paycheck and then reissue it, so it's the correct amount. Okay, so um, and because the payroll system is so complex. That's the best way to do it is to back it out by voiding it and then reissue it. So um, super important to do that. If the employee knows the paycheck is incorrect, then that's, a, that's another process, right? If they haven't cashed a paycheck, if it's something that they can return and have you reissue it, that's the best possible way to do it, right? So um, forms. So there's, there's six forms we're going to talk about that are generated uh, as we do payroll, right? It's kind of to the end um, as we get things going through payroll. Uh, two are going to be W-2s and W-3s, right? W-2s go to the employee and let them know what they can do as they issue taxes, right? So as they issue taxes, they're going to use their W-2 form and the numbers off of that to help them issue their end-of-the-year taxes. 
uh, W3 is basically W2 information, but not for employees, it's gonna be sent to the government. Because the government wants the information you gave to employees, that way they can double check and make sure the employees um, putting the right numbers down on their own tax returns, right? So it's a way for the government to check that and to also report out. Um, the 940 and 941. 940 is a quarterly federal tax return. So this is when you pay your taxes, uh, pay the tax liability, and also pay the liability that's created from running payroll for your employees, right? It's taxes they owe, not you, but you just pass it through. Uh, that's all gonna be done on the 941, right? So that's the, that's the quarterly one that you have to do, okay? It doesn't mean that you only have to pay taxes quarterly. Some, some employees have to, or employers, should pay their liabilities um, biweekly uh, or monthly, right? Uh, some, if you have a big enough payroll, you need to pay it by the next day, right? Within 24 hours or you get in trouble as well. So just, just a note on that, right? So the, the, the report, like the 941 is due quarterly. Um, 940, this one's gonna be for unemployment tax return as well. And so that's an annual report that you file for that one. So those are to go to the uh, federal government. There's the 1099 miscellaneous and 1096. So 1099 is gonna be done for subcontractors. So um, that, those, not employees, not employees on those. And the, the 1096 is gonna be submitted to the IRS for information that you're reporting out on the 1099. That way the IRS can double check what other people are reporting, right? So they can make sure that what you gave them is what's being reported to them, right? So it's kind of like a triangle to, that the IRS creates to help track what people are doing, subcontractors and employees. Um, so those are the six. Uh, other payroll reports, so there's lots of different payroll reports to help us uh, track and budget and plan forward. And especially cash management is important for payroll, right? Because you don't want to run out of cash and not be able to pay payroll. So super important to manage cash. Just because you can cut the checks out of QuickBooks doesn't mean you have the cash to make those checks work on the banking side, right? You could bounce all those. So that's an important piece to, to check as well as you do that. Okay, so can we answer all these questions at the end, right? How does QuickBooks define an employee? Right, so understanding the difference between an employee and a subcontractor, right? Um, and uh, how do you account for payroll deducted by an outside service differently than payroll you run through QuickBooks? So this is this is done, right? So we still have to put all the information in, really. Uh, it's just the outside service gives us the actual paychecks and the liability payments as it flows back into us. So why is it important? Uh, so important to do payroll properly in QuickBooks. Well, it's gonna mess up your chart of accounts, you're gonna uh, get fined, get in trouble with government because it's gonna mess up the liability payments, um, all sorts of problems, right? So it's super important to be able to do it properly. Well, why is it important to enter historical amounts when setting up payroll? So you need to have a full year in to run the W-2s. Right? You can't run a, necessarily a partial year W-2 for an employee that's worked for you all year. That's incorrect reporting. You need to be able to report for the whole year. So that'll be important to be able to put historical information in. What is a payroll schedule and how does it work? Payroll schedule is when you do payday, right? When you pay it, what the day is. You need to make sure that information is updated and correct in, in the QuickBooks. So when you run paychecks, it, ha it goes to the right period and it has the right date on the paycheck. So where do you hold uh, pay, uh, taxes and other payroll deductions before they are paid? So this is, this is gonna be uh, in the liability account. So we can check that doing reporting, right? So our reports can tell us how much is in there for us to pay. Uh, what are six major payroll forms? And so those are gonna be the W-2, W-3. Um, it's gonna be our um, 941 and 940, right? And so that W-2, W-3, that's payroll stuff for employees and, and employer, or not employer, but the federal government. 941 and 940, that's uh, income tax quarterly, and 940 is unemployment annual to the federal government. Both of those go to the federal government. And last but not least is the 1099 and 1096. Those are for subcontractors. 
1099 goes to the subcontractor, 1096 goes to the federal government. And um, hopefully this was a good chapter. That's a lot of information, um, but uh, that's important to know for this chapter as you go through, you gotta have all the info. And then hands-on is another part and we'll do that in class and I'll put the class videos out there. Thanks, bye.